Hello everyone, it's Adam Herring here, and today we're going to learn about atomic structure. This comes from the Chem 110 ebook, Chapter 1, Lesson 1. After this uh, video lecture, you should be able to apply the technique of dimensional analysis to various chemical problems. You should also be able to understand the basic structure of the atom, including the location of protons, neutrons, and electrons and to interpret an atomic symbol. You should be able to defirm, define the term isotope and also calculate the number of protons, neutrons, and electrons for different isotopes and ions. Let's begin. So let's first talk about what is an atom. And I'm not just talking about me, I'm talking about the smallest unit of matter that corresponds to a given element on the periodic table. So you've heard of carbon and nitrogen, oxygen, helium, etc. The smallest unit of matter that is one of those actual elements is what we call an atom. And an atom consists of three main parts that we're going to talk about. Um, you've got protons, neutrons, and electrons. And the neutrons and protons are held in what we call the nucleus of the atom. The electrons are outside of the nucleus in what we call the electron cloud. And what's really amazing is that atoms are mostly empty space. It's an order of 10,000 magnitude difference between the size of the nucleus and the size of the atom. Uh, that's roughly the size of uh, holding a, the, the end of a pencil. So the uh, the end of a pencil inside of a large auditorium is about 1 to 10,000. So if you had an atom with a nucleus the size of the eraser of a pencil, then the whole atom itself occupies the space of an entire large auditorium. And so it's amazing uh, that there's all this empty space. And we're going to talk about a little bit later where are, those, where are those electrons really and what are they doing. Let's talk first a little bit more about these subatomic particles. So you have protons, electrons, and neutrons. And these are all microscopic particles that you cannot see. They are much, much, much too small. These are um, a human is on the order of magnitude of tens to hundreds of kilograms. And that's a, a wide range, but somewhere in that range is the mass of a human. Um, Masses of protons and neutrons are 10 to the minus 27. Uh, that is so small, you cannot notice the difference of that mass. Electrons are a thousand, or excuse me, 10,000 times smaller than that. Uh, they are on the order of 10 to the minus 31 kilograms. And because these masses are so small, we want to come. We came up with a way of talking about the mass of a proton, electron, or neutron that is a little bit more manageable. And we use the term AMU. And this stands for the atomic mass unit. And so the mass of a proton is 1 AMU. The mass of a neutron is 1 AMU. And these come from the definition of AMU. And that is an AMU is exactly 1 12th the mass of a carbon-12 atom. And this kind of seems like a, a weird cyclic type of a definition because there are 12 uh, total protons and neutrons, six of each in carbon-12. Um, but that's what we have. Um, so essentially what we see here is that the mass of an atom is all in its nucleus. If you have even 50 electrons, that's tiny compared to the mass of even one proton. The charge um, is based on the number of protons and the number of electrons. And this, is, this C stands for Coulomb, which is the international unit for charge. Um, but we can also just talk about arbitrary units. So a proton has one positive charge, an electron has one negative charge, and neutrons are neutral, hence their name. Now let's take a look at the periodic table. So uh, biochemistry is actually my favorite application of chemistry. 
And so here is a biological view of the periodic table. What we see here is that there's about six elements that make up major um, components of our living systems. That's carbon, hydrogen, nitrogen, oxygen, phosphorus, and sulfur. And then there's about another 10 or so um, that, are, that play some biological role. Those are those that are indicated in pink here. These are uh, generally metals, although we do have some nonmetals and metalloids in that. Um, and then we have five elements that are abundant in living systems, but only as a monatomic ion. So sodium ion, uh, potassium ion, those are involved in uh, neuro, neuro pathways. Uh, magnesium and calcium ions, fluoride ions, these all play roles in electrical uh, pulses and the electrical signals that happen within our body. Uh, but the vast majority of elements actually play no natural biological roles, although they are essential to human life. Uh, there are some great websites that you can find that take a look at the real use of these elements in our daily lives, whether it's from uh, computer chips to cell phones to uh, in, uh, used in, in essential chemical processes. Chemistry is in the world all around us. And when we take a look at the elements, we can, talk of, we can identify them by their atomic number. Commonly on periodic tables, you have numbers that go as in, increasing as uh, integers. Those numbers are the atomic number. Those are equal to the number of protons of any given element. And that's how we identify a given element. So if we take a look at here, we have an element. We want to know what element is this? Well, we have one, two, three, four, five, six neutrally charged particles and six positively charged particles. So if we have six positively charged particles, then we can figure it out. We know that because an element is defined by its atomic number. The number of protons in the nucleus is telling us the identity. So when we have six protons, the atomic number is six, and then look on the periodic table, find the element with an atomic number of six. So this would be carbon. Now let's walk with carbon for a little bit and take a look at what we call isotopes of carbon, and, or isotopes in general. And an isotope is a given element that has the same number of protons, but different numbers of neutrons. So it's going to have the same atomic number, but a different mass, again, because neutrons contribute mass to the element. So this, we have the atomic symbol. You have the element identified here. You have the mass number that's identified. And then as well, you have the atomic number. So when we take a look at carbon, we have carbon with six protons, a mass total of 12, which means it has six protons and six neutrons. We would call this carbon 12. And this tells us that this is the isotope of carbon that has six neutrons, because they all have to have six protons. We can, however, have different types of carbon. So when you take a look at this, try, pause the video and try to identify uh, if we have carbon six on the left, or excuse me, carbon 12 on the left, what's the element on the right? Pause and then come back. So welcome back. Hopefully you were able to count that in both cases they have six protons. However, the number of neutrons is different. We have eight neutrons on the right, six on the left. That means that we have carbon 12 on the left and carbon 14 on the right. This number, again, is the sum of the protons and the neutrons. Our last thing to talk about here is ions. And ions are charged atoms where there is an unequal number of protons versus electrons. And you can have positively charged ions and negatively charged ions, all dependent on how many electrons versus protons there are. So if we have the same number of electrons as neutrons, then the element is neutral. If there are fewer electrons than there are protons, then it is a positive charge. And we call this a cation. And if there are more electrons than there are protons, then it is a negatively charged ion. And we call that an anion. OK. 
Okay, that is it for the content for this video. Now I'd like you to practice on a problem. So, of the following, which number does not represent a number of protons, neutrons, or electrons found in one of these two ions? Pause the video now, try this on your own, and then resume and I'll walk you through a solution. Welcome back, here's the solution to the video. So, the number of protons is determined by this number, right here, which is 27 for, the, for this element on the left. The number of electrons can be found by observing the charge. So we know that we have a positive charge, so we must be electron deficient. We must have fewer electrons than protons, and since the magnitude of the charge is 2, we need 2 fewer electrons than we have protons. That gives us a total of 25 electrons. To find the number of neutrons, we take the mass number and we subtract the atomic number. That's equal to the number of neutrons. So in this case, we have 60 minus 27, and that's equal to 33. On the right, this is iodide. Iodide has 53 protons, as indicated here. Notice that it has a net negative charge, and so it is electron rich relative to neutral. And since it has one, a magnitude of 1, then it has one extra electron for a total of 54. And the number of neutrons in this case will be 131 minus 53. And that's equal to 78. So for the question of which of those numbers was not represented, the answer is 132. That's it for this video. If you have questions, you can post on Piazza, you can come to office hours, or come to the help sessions. Thanks for watching and have a great day.